Hello, my name is Jeff Matthews, co-inventor of the Allset Master Stone Setting Kit. Now the Allset sets up with the Fordham number 30. The first thing we want to do is take the collar and we're going to loosen the set screws in the back. Both of them, there's two in the rear on the bottom. And we're going to have full clearance there. We'll make sure we've got full clearance. And then we're going to do the same with the brass knob here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the main body and we're going to clip it on the very front of the Fordham number 30. Now holding it firmly with one hand right here, we're going to slip the, the collar over it. And then I like to take this brass knob and go ahead and just tighten it down. That just helps in the alignment process. There's actually a slot there. The reason for this, some of the hand pieces are a little bit different dimensions. That way it'll fit all of them. Now let's go ahead and tighten down these uh, set screws at the very back. And we want to do this evenly. And at the same time, we want to make sure that we don't want to have these screws on the actual clip itself. Okay, I've tightened it down, as you see there. And what we want to do is we want to make sure it's tight enough, but not overly tightened. Now let's go ahead and take this guide. This is being a prong guide, as we see here. And a nut there. And what we're going to do is go ahead and place the guide in the front of the L bracket and the nut below it. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to lightly tighten it. So the next thing is, if you notice, I just put a, any old burr in there. This is a 3 32nd shaft burr. But what we want to do is slide the shaft over top of the burr. And what I like to do is bring the guide all the way down on that, the fat part of that burr, the main shaft part. And then here's the crucial part right here. This is what, uh, that's very important. At this point, we already have this loose. It's not tight yet, the guide. But before we tighten it, we want to go ahead and secure the brass knob here. Okay? When we do that, what happens is it kicks this L bracket up just a little bit. Now at this time, we can go ahead and tighten the guide up with our fingers, okay, as you see there. And then we want to double check that and make sure it's still sliding freely over top of our burr. If it is at that point, go ahead and tighten it with a pair of pliers. Now, the pair of pliers you use, it would be a good idea to get one that matches the serration, and those are real common to find. And you just give it a slight nudge there. Now, the important thing, again, is to just double check it and make sure it's still in alignment as you see it is. That's how you would set up any of the guides here in the All Set Kit. Now the Pave guides are the ones right back here in the very back of the, of the tool kit, as you see here. And they arrange, they have different sizes to accommodate different size burrs. As you can see, the very smallest is for that micro Pave type work, any of these uh, three or four here. But anyway, what we do, I'd like to show you this ring right here. This is the project that we're gonna be working on today. This is a uh, eternity band, so you got diamonds going all the way around it or stones, should I say, and it's three rows. So whenever we set something like this, the reason why I have chose this as a project is because everyone knows that the deeper you go on the stones, the closer together they become. Therefore, it's very uh, important that we set our depth correct. But also, if you'll notice in this project, that we have a curved surface here. So again, the deeper the stones come, go in, the closer they are together. And we don't want them uh, overlapping or, or actually causing damage because they're too close. This right here, as we uh, know, is the all set. And again, you can adjust the different heights or levels. Simply loose this, loosen the uh, brass knob here, allows the shaft to slide back and forth. You can easily adjust your height or your adjustment right here with this knob. Then when you get to the desired depth, you tighten the brass knob and you're ready to go. Now, let's go ahead and start, actually, how would we approach, should I say, getting the ring to this point? We start out with a blank. Now, this particular project we chose was done by one of the CNC machines and then cast. 
Now, I realize it's not a Pave project from the blank or raw blank, but it really truly signifies the, the need of the tool. Now, the tool can be used in the, uh, a blank of material, the flat spaces or curved, but this particular one right here it has the prongs already, or the beads already raised. If you'll also notice, those are quite tall. The reason for it, we're using CZs and they're quite deep. So we kind of planned for that when we built this. To start out with, I'm going to get behind the scope here and we're going to show you this step one. As you can see here, we've done a lot of cutting to give it the, you know, to the sparkle or the shine beneath the stones, which is really critical. Now what kind of gravers did we use? And, and we can do it a variety of different ways. I chose this. This is a 60 degree, 60 degree angle. And what I did is I went in and cut a 60 degree all the way around like this. Okay, now this cut right here is done with a half round. That's very simple to do with a half round. Actually that burr you can build uh, with, a, with an old burr. But notice this, this is a burr that I actually used as a hardened stool, uh, tool steel burr. But it's got a polished edge here. We're going to talk about that in a minute. It's very important. Whatever kind of edge you have on your gravers is going to emulate it when you do your cut. So this was done here. All the way around, I went and made my cuts completely around on both sides. Then on the interior cuts, I used the same type of burr or graver, but it was cut smaller using a high speed. Actually, this is tungsten carbide. It's great for like platinum and gold work. Anyway, all those interior cuts were done with this. And you also want to deburr it. In other words, take all the little pieces out of there if you can, okay? Now let's move it one step further and actually start the setting procedure. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut these so that we can perform the kind of setting that will be level and uniform and even all the way around. I've made my adjustment on my height and that's the height that I've chosen right there. I did a test run to make sure that I was at the exact level. What I did is I started out with the guide here, retracted out, tried a few stones, placed them in, in order, and realized I needed to go deeper. So I made that adjustment by simply using this knob right here. I unscrewed the brass knob and made my adjustments right here. So here we go. As you can see, you can uniformly just go down the row since I've already set the depth and it sure makes it a lot easier. Just kind of rotate it. They're not going to go any deeper than they need to be because they're going to bottom out on those prongs. Now let's go on the other side. Now if you'll notice down here that when this tool is in there, it's keeping everything uniform as it goes down the row. And you notice too, I'm holding it in my hand. That means that allows this mounting to flex and to actually find center with our guide there, as you see there. Now let's go ahead. Now the center stones are a little bit larger. These were the 1.75 millimeter. These are two millimeter in the center, so let me grab a, a larger burr. Now the same thing, I, I better put some burr life on there. You can see that you can easily cut that, and you want to go down the row. Now it always happens, whenever you do any kind of cutting like this, you will always have to deburr those areas right there. 
So what I'll do is I'll go back in with my graver. This one right here, again, was the number 60. And that means that refers to the, the angle of the graver. And what I'll do is I'm going to go back in there and take out that little piece of metal that we created through the machining process. This little extra step right here makes a difference between a good piece and a fine piece. And you'd want to do that all the way around, but you can see it's very easy to deburr de that using the exact tool you used before. Now, whenever we do a, a uh, graver like this, you can see that polished edge on there. Remember, it mirrors whatever kind of polish we use that on. So that would be important to use the right graver for the right job. Now let's go ahead and put some of those stones in there. Just like that right there. Now, what I'm using here is a, is a bamboo, bamboo, which you can buy or, or acquire. And it works out real well. Now once you put your stones in there, I usually like a snug fit. A snug fit means less work or machining afterward. Now many times you'll find, especially if you're using uh, machines like the GRS or anything that's going to cause vibration, we want to hold those stones securely. So a good idea there is to take some red sprue wax, as you see here, and just cover a little layer over top of the stones. And then what I do is I take a torch and I lightly heat it up. And what you're going to do is just very carefully just lightly heat that up. And we just need a little bit of wax there. And what this does, it kind of holds them in place so that when we're doing our hammering, it won't get in, in the way. Now what I usually like to do is just to make sure that we always keep these just at the right spot. Now what if you have emeralds and things like that? You can still use this process, you just go about it really slow because you don't want to cause too much heat too quick on those finer stones. Now at this point, let's go ahead and start pushing the prongs. You have many options here of how to do that. But what we chose on this particular project is we're using the two bead method. And that, what that means is we're going to go this way and then we're going to come back around this way and push that way. Now I have a number 10 beading tool. Of course, you would select the right size for the right uh, bead there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push forward toward the stone, rotate a little bit. Now I'm going to go to the next one, do the same thing, push towards it, rotate. And then I'm going to turn the corner here and go towards the inside again. Now you gotta put some pressure on it if you're doing it by hand. However, if you use one of the impact machines that are readily available for this type of work, it makes it much easier. Now at this point, what I would do is I would come in here and make sure that I round that bead out. So you're gonna do a real nice job of actually rounding the bead out. A little bit of pressure, a little bit of twisting, a little bit of turning and actually you create some really fine looking beads. As you can see here, you end up getting a real uniform, even look. It is important that we set the stones at an even depth, but it's equally important that we treat the stones underneath and around them. Because it's very difficult to get a real tight angle underneath the scope, we wanted to make sure that we fully understood the adjustments we made obtaining or getting the ring to this point. With the all set, we have the brass knob here. What we did is we adjusted or loosened this. But before I do, I want to show you a neat little trick here. If you're ever doing some setting work, it's a good idea. Now this right here will sometimes move on you. If it bothers you, just move it simply up to the top as, one, as long as it's tightened up. But when you're actually doing setting with the tool, that would be in any of these guides you might use. What you want to do is put the, the uh, adjustment knob back to zero. And what I mean by back to zero is you're actually putting it back to the very back edge of this main body. 
By doing so, what I do is I push my finger down, make sure it's locked in, and then when I loosen this knob back here, nothing's moving. So if I needed to make a, an adjustment, I'm going from zero either deeper or more shallow. I don't have to start all over. It's really a very handy way to use your tool. I think this trick might save you a lot of time and effort. And this, again, is true with any of the setups we have. And once you get it to the desired depth, then what we do is we tighten the knob here. That locks it into place. Now you're ready to do your setting. Thank you very much for previewing the All Set Stone Setting System. I know you're going to enjoy it. Like any tool, it takes a little bit of time getting used to it. Once you do, you've got it made.